Welcome to worship as we come to worship our Lord and Savior together on this day of Pentecost. As we hear this story of God's Spirit coming down upon the apostles, may you know that God's Spirit is with you and with you always. May this worship service be a blessing to you as you are drawn closer to God, as you come to worship and praise God this day. So now, let us worship. It was seven weeks after Jesus the Messiah was crucified and rose from the grave. 
Forty days he stayed with us, teaching us about God's kingdom, preparing us for what was to come. We watched as he ascended into heaven. Now we would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. But we would not be alone, for soon he said a gift was coming. The Spirit of God would make his home in our hearts, bringing wisdom, power, and love. Then, as we were gathered on the day of Pentecost, suddenly we heard a sound like the rushing wind. Out of nowhere appeared tongues of fire descending on each of us. It was incredible to behold. We were filled with the Holy Spirit. God was preparing us because the city was filled with devout men from every nation under heaven. They gathered to hear us preach because each man could understand us in his own language and they were amazed. By the power of the Spirit, we were able to tell them the good news about Jesus Christ in their native tongues. That day, 3,000 of them repented and were baptized. None of us had ever done anything like it in our lives. The Holy Spirit is God's free gift for all who come to believe in Him. You too, by the power of the Spirit, can accomplish great things that you would never imagine yourself capable of. In the Spirit we have hope, light, comfort, peace, love, and life. My friend, don't let this powerful gift remain dormant in your life. Listen to it, learn from it, and step out in faith. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for salvation through water for the water in this font, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, estaban todos juntos en el mismo lugar. De repente vino del cielo un ruido como el de una violenta ráfaga del viento y llenó toda la casa donde estaban reunidos. Se les aparecieron entonces unas lenguas como de fuego y se repartieron y se posaron sobre cada uno de ellos y todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en diferentes lenguas según el Espíritu les concedía expresarse. Or, il y avait un séjour à Jerusalem des Juifs, un pieu de toutes les nations qui sont sous le ciel. Au bruit qui eut lieu, la multitude accourut, et elle fut confondue parce que chacun les entendait parler dans sa propre langue. Ils étaient tous dans l'étonnement et la surprise, et ils se disaient les uns aux autres. Voici, les gens qui parlent, ne sont-ils pas tous Galiléens? Et comment les entendons-nous? dans notre langue propre à chacun, dans notre langue maternelle. Qui ci sono parti, medi, elamiti, alcuni di noi vengono dalla Mesopotamia, dalla Giudea, dalla Cappadocia, dal Ponto e dall'Asia, dalla Frigia, dalla Panfilia, dall'Egitto, dalla Libia Cernaica. E ci sono perfino dei pellegrini venuti di Ro da Roma, Alcuni ebri di nascita, altri in vecchi convertiti da poco alla religione ebraica, poi cretesi ed arabi. E tutti noi sentiamo questi umani che parlano nelle nostre lingue delle grandi cose di Dio. Stupiti e perplessi si chiedevano, che mai vorrà dire tutto questo? Altri in vecchi tra la folla dicevano ridendo. Sono ubriachi, ecco che vuol dire. Da trat Petrus auf mit den Elfen, erhob seine Stimme und redete zu ihnen. Ihr Juden, liebe Männer und alle, die ihr zu Jerusalem wohnet, das sei euch kundgetan und lasset meine Worte zu euren Ohren eingehen. Denn diese sind nicht trunken, wie ihr wähnet, sind die Malen, es ist die dritte Stunde am Tage sondern das ist, was durch den Propheten Joel zuvor gesagt ist. Und es soll geschehen in den letzten Tagen, spricht Gott, ich will ausgießen von meinem Geist auf alles Fleisch und eure Söhne und eure Töchter sollen weissagen und eure Jünglinge sollen Gesichte sehen und eure Ältesten sollen Träume haben. In den 教官我的仆人和使女他们就要说预言这都在主达而明显的日子未到以前到那时候反求高主明的旧必得旧。Happy Pentecost! Today we are going to dig into a reading of Acts that we just heard read in multiple languages to look at interruptions and disruptions. We'll see how the Spirit coming down on this day of Pentecost brings a disruption among the lives of the apostles. 
which ultimately is a blessing as they go out to proclaim the good news of Jesus and the love of God to all people. We all experience interruptions often in our lives, and they're often easier to handle than the disruptions that we experience in our lives. Disruptions can be harder to deal with, and, but ultimately can be a blessing in our lives as well. Well, during this time of disruption, we put our faith and our trust in God and know that God's Spirit is with us always and leading us through this time of disruption. Well, let's start with interruptions. We all are interrupted multiple times in our lives. Even in writing this sermon and putting it into words, I was interrupted by texts or emails to know who they were from or what they were about. I was interrupted by my kids. I think uh, the definition of a child includes an interrupter. They need something now or they want to tell us something now uh, and they have to come and interrupt us. Ever since Madison has been potty trained about a year now, she's been interrupting my sleep in the middle of the night to tell me she has to go to the bathroom. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for that. But she interrupts that, but I'm able to go back to sleep, which makes it an interruption. Jesus is interrupted uh, often in his ministry because people are coming to him and wanting to be healed by him because he knows they ha he has this power and ability. And so he's interrupted, but he's able to go back to uh, his plan of the ministry that he was going to go do it during that time. Contrast this with uh, disruption. When Madison wakes me up, uh, if it's not in the middle of the night, if it's uh, closer to the morning, but still early in the morning, and I'm not able to go back to sleep, that's a disruption. I can't go back to the way things were. I can't just fall back asleep after I put her back to sleep. Think about uh, those who were impacted uh, by the internet, whose lives and businesses were disrupted when the internet was created. How many people were buying encyclopedias after the internet uh, had started? Not many, because people were using the internet uh, for their information. Well, we are in a time of disruption as well. In March, we thought uh, COVID-19 was going to be an interruption. We thought we would be back to church in a couple of weeks, but we're not. And uh, things have changed. We've gone to online worship and we've provided these resources uh, for all who want to uh, be able to access them. God is using this time to reach those uh, who uh, may not have gone into a church building before. Some people are more willing to log on to a worship service online than they would have been uh, to come into a sanctuary to worship with us. So God is doing amazing things uh, during this time. He's drawing people closer to him. He's drawing us into a closer relationship uh, with God as well. And so this time is a blessing as well. Yes, it can be difficult and a struggle as we deal with many hardships of life, but we can look at the blessings that this brings our lives as well. The thing about a disruption is that we will not go back to the way it exactly was before this. And we won't as a church either. For we will be continuing to offer online worship, whether it be live streaming or posts, so that those who aren't or can't come to our church to worship will still be able to worship with us. So we are changed as people, as a church, and as a world. So we see that we have interruptions in our lives. And we see that we have disruptions in our lives, but we know that God is leading us through this. Well, I want to focus on a, a disruption that God brings about. God brings about a disruption among the lives of the apostles. Now, they know that they will be receiving the Spirit, 
and uh, that they are to wait for the Spirit uh, until uh, they receive the Spirit. It says in Luke chapter 24, Jesus is speaking, You are witnesses to these things, being his resurrection after his crucifixion. He continues, And see, I am sending upon you what my Father has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. They knew the Spirit was coming, but they couldn't comprehend uh, the impact it would have on their lives. And so uh, they uh, receive this Spirit, and it brings a disruption in their lives that God brings about so that it's a blessing for them so that they can go out and do this ministry. So it says in our reading in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. The apostles were given new abilities because they received the Spirit that they didn't have before. They were able to speak in other languages. So when they went out to the crowd and proclaimed the good news of Jesus, all could understand in their native language. The Spirit gave them this ability. The Spirit gave them other powers and abilities as well to heal and continue to travel and proclaim this good news of Jesus. The Spirit brought a disruption to their lives, which was a blessing for them and for our world as that message got proclaimed to all people throughout the world. So they were no longer baptized with water. They were baptized with the Spirit, given gifts by the Spirit to be able to go out and proclaim this good news of Jesus. So we have disruptions, and God can use these disruptions. Now let's look at our life and our disruption at this time of COVID-19. Now, no, God did not bring about this disruption, but God is certainly using this disruption for the sake of ministry, to draw people closer to himself so that others uh, can learn about God through online worship, be connected with people in other ways. And as we too have been baptized with the Spirit in our baptism, we too have received the Spirit, and we too have received different gifts and abilities. Let's look at Paul's letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 3 through 7. Now we are in a time of disruption, and God has blessed us to be able to get through it. God has given us the gifts and abilities that we need to be able to do ministry even in this time. And so uh, we know that God is with us always through the Spirit. That on this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the Spirit coming to the apostles, the formation of the church, and God's Spirit being with us always, leading us and sending us as well. So yes, there are a lot of interruptions in our lives, and we can handle those. 
This disruption can be harder to handle, but with God and God's Spirit, we know that God is with us always. God will continue to use us as a church and us as individuals to care and reach out to the world and those who are in need. So how is God sending you in this time? How is the Spirit sending you and how is the Spirit made it capable for you to be able to care for others? It could be as simple as reaching out to those who are struggling. Maybe we don't even know if they're struggling. Maybe it's just contacting some of our close friends and our family and trying to have an honest conversation with them, asking how they're really doing, how their work is going, how life is at home for them, how they're doing now as things are slowly opening as well. Well, may you know that God is with you always, that God has blessed you with the Spirit. And during this time of disruption, as we change as a church, may you know that we are here for you. Pastor Randy, you're willing to meet now with those who want to talk, with those who need care or those who are struggling. We're working on planning worship services outside and probably and starting with doing kind of parking lot worship, almost like drive-in movie theater style so that people who need to be here physically are able to do so and we're able to do it safely in the parking lot. God continues to lead us and bless us as a congregation. So we give thanks to God for you and for the work that God is doing in us and through us as a church. Happy Pentecost and may God bless you. Amen.
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort and healing, especially Diane, Angie, Karen, Becky, the family and friends of Dee, for Rob and for Rob. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places Stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you for all that you have done and continue to do with us, St. Philip, during this time, for participating in worship or sharing with Sheridan or family promise or bingo or prayer or gatherings, whether it be a men's Bible study or youth group or confirmation. We thank you for continuing to be part of God's church today during this time of COVID-19. We also thank those who continue to financially give to St. Philip. We continue to be strong financially because of you. We are grateful for all that you do, for all that you give, and uh, we pray that we may continue to uh, be together virtually, and that as we slowly open up, that we will be able to gather in small groups once again. If you wish to give at this time, uh, we invite you uh, to go to uh, stphilip-co.org backslash giving, and you can give online now. Thank you. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit, fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come the Spirit, come, fill me up, Holy Spirit. Try to fill me up. So many things try to weigh me down. Fill my heart now until you stay. And chase the other things away. Now 
come, my heart is an open door. Here your, your spirit is welcome, Lord. Fill me up, come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill my heart now and let it grow. Change my life so all will know. Fill my heart, fill my heart is coming. Fill me up, come, oh Holy Spirit. Fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come, oh Holy Spirit. Fill me up now and take control. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill me up to the top of my soul. Now come, Holy Spirit. Fill me up now and take control. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs> 